Namaste, everyone. Welcome to Federation of Canada Nepal Chamber of Commerce Presents CEO and Executive Series. FNFCNCC aims to connect and create business opportunities. Uh, this series is a forum where top leaders and executive talk and share about their knowledge, experience, and expertise. This is your moderator, Sanchita Bista, and you can uh, and we are currently live from CanadaCover.com. You can also watch all of our recorded sessions from FCNCC YouTube channel. For today's episode, we have Mr. Parikshit Pasnet. Please welcome uh, Mr. Parikshit Basnet, Youth Entrepreneur Coordinator of Federation of Canada Nepal Chamber of Commerce, who is successfully operating multiple businesses in such a young age. He is the founder of Mint Avenue Inc., Elite Email, and also Airbnb Superhost. Additionally, he runs the podcast Keeping It Real. He travels so many countries and live a life with style and passion. Welcome to the ninth episode of CEO and Executive Series, Mr. Parikshit Basnet. Thank you very much. I am very honored to be here. Okay, so uh, let's uh, start with the questions. So uh, people are always taught to work hard in school, uh, mm. to get good grades and get a good job. So what it takes to be a youth entrepreneur and create a job for yourself rather than finding one for you? For sure. I think the main thing is, um, you know, just depending on yourself, right? So um, a lot of times when we want to learn things, we rely on schools uh, and, you know, people to teach us things. But if you want to create your own opportunity, <laughs> you have to be in control. So you have to go out of your way and learn. When I was younger, uh, as much as I learned from school, I learned a lot just searching on the Internet, watching YouTube videos, you know, reading books like so many of these books that I bought. Um, you know, I, I just started reading. It wasn't like a school project. You know, I have to read. I actually went out of my way to learn and study these. And I think that is one of the ma main thing is just kind of being self-dependent on yourself, relying on, you know, uh, not just relying on formal education, but also self-education. And a, a huge thing as well is understanding that this is possible because I believe, you know, um, especially in our culture, we sometimes are so fixated on go to school then go to college, get a degree, then get a job, and then, you know, progress in that job and you'll be successful. But, you know, that's because of the internet, because of all the changes that's happening. There's so many opportunities out there. So, you know, we don't have to just stick to, you know, one, you know, one thing, right? The one way of life, one route. There's so many unique routes you can take. And those routes will come to you as, you know, you, as you are learning and as you are taking, you know, being more dependent on yourself. Okay, so uh, can you tell us more about your journey as an entrepreneur, starting from selling hats uh, to your classmates to founding Mint Avenue? For sure. So um, yeah, I'm selling hat when I was younger, just to make any money, I will uh, you know I would sell hats. Sometimes I would sell like little little things. I'd buy in Dollarama and then sell it to my friends in school, make two dollars profit. Just you know, always just finding ways to just make money when I'm young, just to buy candy or whatever. But um, yeah, to uh, how I started Mint Ave was actually uh, very accidental, um, and I'll go through my whole journey. You know, um, as I was in high school, I was, as I was saying, I was watching YouTube videos. I was learning about, you know, the online business world, and I start, I just, I just started at trying things, right? I, I, I understood that I was very young. I don't have that many responsibilities, and this is the time to take risk. This is the time to try things out because, you know, if I I'm trying to start new businesses when I'm older, when I have, you know, a lot of responsibilities, it's going to be harder for me to do so. So I started off first in e-commerce. Uh, I was running my own online e-commerce shop. And, you know, while running your own store, your own business, you have to play a lot of different roles and you have to learn a lot of things, right? I have to learn how to do customer service. I have to learn how to do advertising. I have to do, and one of the things I learned was email marketing. Um, and what happened to me was that uh, at one time someone came to me and, you know, they were making a lot of money and I wasn't really making that much money. And I saw that, oh, I can help them out, uh, do this, you know, email for them because a lot of people didn't, weren't doing email marketing for their stores, but I was. So I would convince them that, hey, this email marketing thing is actually very helpful for you. And for, you know, the, the person, it, it was, they were a little hesitant if they wanted to work with me or not, but eventually I convinced them. And you know, that I, I remember he paid me $2,000 to write emails for him. 
And I was so happy because I thought, you know, oh my God, like someone paid me this much money to write emails. But what also happened was that that those emails made him 12,000 that month. So yeah, it was a win-win, right? I won, he won. And ever since that, it just sparked a little, you know, a little light in my brain. And I said, okay, I'm just gonna continue doing this because this is what business is, right? A business solves a problem. I saw that a lot of e-commerce owners, e online business owners had the problem of not doing email marketing, not knowing email marketing. And I provided the solution for them and got paid because of it. Okay, so you are the leader in e-commerce in email industry and also the founder of you, uh, Elite Email, generating 16 million email revenue, right? So, so how did it come to that large number? Mm -hmm. um, honestly, um, I think I was one of the first ones in the e-commerce industry to start talking about email. So eventually I started becoming the email guy, right? So whenever you would think of uh, email, you would think of Parikshit or as I go online, Splash, right? So just being one of the first uh, ones out there, a lot of people were, instead of, you know, in, in business, usually if you want to get business, you have to go out and reach out to people and, you know, like convince them to work with you. But what I was focused on was branding myself as the email guy. So when people need emails, they come to me. And a lot, you know, just from that uh, first couple of store, you know, people came and they wanted my help with emails. Uh, I made them, I made them money. And then they went and told their friends and, or, you know, I, I had more confidence that I can do it. And I just started working with bigger and bigger stores. And when you're dealing with bigger stores, you know, with, with whatever we do, like, you, like, for example, our services sometimes bring in a company 30% extra revenue, whatever they're doing. So if in a year, they're doing millions of dollars. You know, we, we, get, we, we bring the million, extra millions of dollars. Uh, for example, last month, one of our clients, our company that we work with, uh, they, they did one, $1.2 million in revenue and 400,000 of that was email revenue, right? So from, from our company. So it first started as me, then I built a team then now, you know, I have people that do emails for me that are way better than me at emails. And just be just, you know, starting from me to that first time where I made that person 12,000, it just grew and grew and just added on and added on, you know, because I've been doing this for almost six years now. Right. So every year is just compounding and compounding and compounding and and we're just like growing. So, yeah, like that's how we've been able to generate that much revenue um, outside of like how we did it. Like, you know, the technical things is that we actually care about produce like giving our clients results, right? We actually want to make them, if they pay us money, we want to make sure we pay them money. So we, I make sure to train my team. I make sure to hire the best people, best designers, best writers, best uh, email marketers, and just having a talented team. And, you know, my team, Mintab, um, the team in Mintab, they're so strong. They're so good at emails. You know, even last month, like I said, like they're for just for one client, they were able to bring in $400,000. So, um, yeah, I'm just very, very grateful for my team and just, you know, just been doing this for so long that it's added up to that much. Okay, talking about Mint Avenue. So how did you found Mint Avenue? Uh, so yeah, um, when I first, I was a freelancer in the beginning, just writing emails and uh, yeah, just finally realizing the opportunity that I can just write emails for people and make money. I just turned it into a company, you know, Mint Av. This was actually the name of my first online store. So when it was time to make a corporation, mm -hmm. I just named it after the first store, uh, my first online e-commerce store. Um, but yeah, and, and Mint Ave, it, I started this when I was in my first semester at Ryerson University. This is when I realized that, oh, like this opportunity, opportunity that I have actually might be worth something and I should actually go all in. And from then, I just, you know, that's, that's when Mint Ave started uh, when I was in university and then we've just been growing it ever since. Uh, okay, so uh, we uh, we saw you are also an Airbnb super host. So mm -hmm. how Mint Ave and Airbnb super host? So what what came in between? Um. Yeah. So you know, uh, we had a situation where we, we 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 bought a house and there were you know rooms vacant and we could have went the traditional route and just rented it out to someone. But just being in the business world and knowing a lot of people that do different things. One of the things is that I have a lot of friends that do Airbnb. Um, and then they were also telling me, hey, like instead of renting it out, you should do Airbnb. And I can only take credit for the idea, but the actual results and everything, uh, it goes to my parents because, you know, they're the one 
that are taking care of the guests. They're the one making sure that everything is smooth and, you know, us being Nepalese and, you know, having good hospitality, uh, that, that really helps. And people actually, you know, people really enjoy um, connecting with my dad or, you know, just communicating with them. And my dad is very uh, hospitable person as well. So, you know, they, they, they like that. And because of his, because of his amazing, amazing service and because of how my parents have done everything, like, you know, we were able to become Airbnb super host in our first year and continue to do so. Okay, so uh, uh, founding Mint Avenue Ev and being a uh, European super host. So, what key strategy, strategies or tips you can share with the aspiring entrepreneurs out there? Oh, for sure. Um, the number one thing, uh, you know, I, I just look at some of the most successful people out there and, and I just listen to what they say. So, one thing I noticed that all the big CEOs like Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk they were very, very focused on the product, right? So in the sense of uh, Mint Ave, our product is our email service, us writing the emails. I need to make sure that the emails that we write are the best in the market, right? Airbnb, we got to make the product is our Airbnb. We have to make sure that, you know, everything is smooth for our guests, making sure that whatever they need is provided. So one of the main things to focus on when you are, if you want to succeed in business is focus on the customers, right? So many times I think businesses are just so focused on themselves that they don't even take time to think about the customers or like, you know, like, like care about the customers. Again, if you are a business that cares about your customers, you will stand out and people will notice that and they will want to do business with you instead of someone else because you actually care. So focus on your customer and just have the best product. And if you're just focused on that, you will win, right? Because you, ha you will have the best product in the market. Yes, people first. So whenever we talk about business, we always talk about people's first, right? So mm -hmm. uh, being a Airbnb super host, founder of a company, and also you run a podcast called Keeping It Real. So mm -hmm. how did you came up with the idea for running a podcast? Oh, uh, yeah. So, you know, I just have a lot of people that I know in the business world. So the whole idea of keeping it real was bringing in real business owners that give real business advice. Um, you know, I'm not here to diss schools, but, you know, when I went to school, my my business professors never ran a business. You know, my marketing professor had never done marketing. So it didn't feel real to me, right? This They're just reading off a textbook, telling you what to do, telling you this is right, but they don't have experience. So I created a podcast where I brought in people with experience. So if I bring in someone that's going to start talking about stocks, it's because he does stocks every day. If I'm going to bring someone that does marketing, it's because he does marketing every day. You know, I'm going to bring someone that can, is going to talk about Airbnb. It's because he is an Airbnb host, super host, right? So that was my focus is that in this world, there's so much noise and garbage. People always telling you, you should do this, you should do that. But I'm like, no, why don't you listen to people that are actually doing it instead of just listening to people telling you what to do? You know, listen. I, so I made a platform where people can listen and learn from people that are actually doing the things that they're talking about. Not, it's not just because they read a book and they're smart now, they can, you know, re, re, read what they said and they, you know, they think that's, that's good, but no. I, and uh, the podcast is really amazing because, you know, for aspiring entrepreneurs, it gives them hope and it, it, it gets them a chance to learn from people, again, doing it, right? In the, in the past, we couldn't just meet, you know, like it would be hard for us to go meet a business owner and actually listen to their speech and learn from them. Because online now we are able to do so, so just having that platform uh, it has been huge, and I can it's been very beneficial to you know people that have listened to the podcast. Uh, it's it's great, like learning from the people that are actually doing stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, how do you balance everything around like your multiple businesses and your podcast and even your personal life? So how do you stay focused focused on life? For sure. Um, you know, it has a lot to do with just kind of staying organized. And I'll, I'll be the first one to say that I still, this is something I still work on, you know, just being organized, being more proactive with your time instead of reactive. So, you know, to, when tomorrow comes, I should know what I'm doing each hour. Or, you know, if I have a meeting, okay, I got to do this instead of, oh, like, you know, this happened, I got to do this. Oh, wait, there's this fire. So you got to just be proactive with your time, in control of your time, be very purposeful with your time. It surprises me that people don't know what their day is going to look like the day before. You know, that to me is someone that's asleep. You can't be asleep. You got to you gotta be proactive. You have to know, hey, like tomorrow in the morning, I have this. Then afternoon, I have to work on this. Then evening, I have to, you know, do this. Like, 
instead of, oh, I woke up, oh, what's in my mind? Oh, wait, someone is yelling at me about this. Let me work. You know what I'm saying? So uh, you have to be proactive and organized. And it, and also, to be honest, like none of this is, is possible again without my team, right? I'm only one person. I can only do so much. I have people in place that do the things that need to be done, but I don't need to do, right? There's a lot of things that I don't need to do, but that needs to get done. And my team members and you know the softwares and the systems we have do that while I can focus on what matters. Um, and then that's how I've been able to grow because in every business, they call it the 80-20 principle, right? 20% uh, of the things you do bring in 80% of the results. So my, my job is to work on the 20% things, not the 80% things, you know? Like for example, I make YouTube, I make videos. I can edit my own videos, but it's not worth my time to edit my own videos because there's other better things I could be doing that brings bigger results. You know what I mean? Same way, you know, when I first started, I, I used to be the right one that write all the emails. But now if I want to grow, I can't be the one trying to grow and writing the email. So I have to bring someone that does it for me. Um, and so yeah, just having talented people by your side that are just helping you execute what you are trying to do is the way I've been able to do all these things. Okay. Yeah, that's great. So uh, can you uh, share more insights about your podcast? What uh, topics do you cover? I, is it just about the business people or anything else, other people, personalities as well? Yeah, I, I try to bring in people that just do different stuff. You know, I brought my friend that's very spiritual. Then, I, you know, I've also brought my friend that just is an amazing salesperson people that own businesses, you know, like crypto businesses. So it's all different type of people that I know. Like I just try to look at, okay, you know, if someone is succeeding in a certain way, I just want them to come and share their story. Because uh, the thing is, uh, you know, for aspiring entrepreneurs and people that want to start out, one of the biggest things that you need in the beginning is hope, right? You need to be, you need like, you need to believe that this is possible. And even in, when I first started, I used to listen to a lot of podcasts of people that already done what I wanted to do. And just listening to them and just having that in my headspace made me realize that, oh, like this is actually possible, right? So um, we have all sorts of guests. We, we And then I also do solo episodes sometimes where it's just me talking about a topic or talking about a lesson I had just learned or an experience I just went through. Um, but yeah, I, I try to mix it up with guests and I just try to make it valuable and I think if I was an aspiring entrepreneur, what would I want to hear? And I try to cater to that, uh, you know, that, that target market. Okay, so talking about the lessons you have learned. So as an entrepreneur, so of course you have met many challenges. So what are some challenges that you have faced along the way and how you overcome them? Um, for sure, I, you know, business, life and anything that's worthwhile, uh, it's just going to be ups and downs. You know, no matter what level you're at, there's always just going to be ups and downs. Uh, you know, I've had a lot of major obstacles, you know, hiring the wrong people, trusting the wrong people, getting in business with the wrong people, or, you know, like making mistakes with like not being organized in my business that caused just, it, and it was just, a, even though we we're making money, it was just so chaotic and, you know, it was so hard to work. And I, I there's been a lot of mistakes I've made. Like, honestly, I, I, I continue, and I will continue to make mistakes because that's how you know, I will grow. That's how you learn, right? You can't learn if everything is going good. You know, you learn when things are going bad. And that's when you realize that, oh, I made this mistake. I shouldn't do it. You know, for me, one of them was like, oh, I should be very organized because if something gets big and it's not organized, it, it takes so long to try to fix that mess. Or like, you know, even like knowing my data, right? Understanding like, okay, here are my numbers. Okay, this is my, my profit. This is my expenses. Like being aware of that. Um, so yeah, just I've made so many. I can like, you know, I, I can just go down a list of all the little little mistakes I've made in business, you know, not capitalizing on a trend or not doing this or you know, doing like getting distracted, so many mistakes. And and I and I, again I will still continue to make mistakes because in order to grow, you need to make mistakes. So uh, how do you stay up to date with the trends and developments that happen in the day-to-day -day life and in the e-commerce and marketing industries as well? So are there any specific resources or strategies you use to continuously expand your knowledge and skills? Yes. So, you know, um, I try to just, uh, I, I, I'm in a, I'm, I put myself in an environment where that, 
that happens, right? So on my Twitter, I only follow business people and people in my industry. So when something is happening, they're all talking about it, right? So I can just go on Twitter and if something, you know, like let's say there's an update for a software, people will start talking about it. If there's, uh, for example, you know, AI, right? Artificial intelligence was such a huge thing in our industry. And I was able to capitalize on it and learn more about it, just following the people I follow and just the environment I was in. And uh, I, I do believe like depending on what subject you're trying to study, books can be outdated because especially our industry, right? If you try to write a book about our industry today, by the time it's published, it's going to be obsolete. It's not going to be useful. So I try to, you know, watch videos and of people that I know are, you know, staying up the trend. And there's so many, you know, we live in the information age back in the days, right? It was, it was hard for like, knowledge was a privilege, right? Um, you know, now that if you have an internet connection, you can learn how to build a rocket from just a Google, right? So like, utilize that like there's so much information out there you just have to you know go uh, out of your way and look for them and then just kind of you know keep uh, yourself up to date like that yes of course i agree to that and so is a youth entrepreneur of a federation of canada nepal chamber of commerce so what are your plans to motivate youth for business i think one of the first things is exposing that this is possible right like i've said before and this is nothing against our culture right this is because this is the way this is the way we know how to be successful which is go to school get a degree get a job you know work towards that job progress and you know like this is how you succeed or earn and then with that money invest xyz um i think that's such a common thing i want to even just break the notion and say that hey like there's other ways out there as well just so First, making people aware that this is possible, that there's not the school job route is not the only route. And I, I, I want to do, you know, live events. I want to do live workshops. Uh, I would love to, you know, I've been making content um, and, and I'm seeing people uh, are engaging with it and learning from it. I, I want to do more of that. But I think a, a huge difference will be when, you know, we can actually go ahead and do live workshops and people are showing up and wanting to learn. And in the Nepalese community, you know, I think entrepreneurship is not a huge focus because, again, we're so programmed to go to school, get a job. But I think once we start exposing the opportunities, letting people realize that, hey, like times have changed. You know, there is people out there just, you know, working from home, making $10,000 a month because they know a skill or because they know something that's the latest trend. Right. It's, it's not just, hey, go become an engineer, doctor, lawyer, accountant. That's not the only way. So. I want to expose other opportunities and, you know, hold live workshops and make content for cater toward the youth of, you know, the Nepalese youth so they can start, you know, coming up with ideas of, okay, well, what can I do? You know, how can I utilize this and how can I like, you know, take risk and try different things? Who knows? One of the things might work out and actually end up, you know, being something worthwhile for them. Yeah, and it's it's sometimes it's just one click that that motivates you towards something great, and like when one has been doing one thing for so long time, and you try something new and it works, so that that's super nice. And apart from that, apart from the business, apart from uh, the podcast, so are you involved in any social activity, charity, or anything like that? Um, yes, I, I know I try to help out any way I can. Uh, I try to do a lot more back in Nepal, just because, you know, growing up in Nepal, being from Nepal, I uh, will try to, you know, uh, usually, honestly, it's my dad that will expose the opportunity of like, hey, like, you know, the local school in our village, they, they're building a library, you know, like, okay, sure, I'll donate or hey, they want school supplies or, you know, or I even have, have done things where if any person in Nepal wants to, you know, learn from me or work for me, I'll, I'll do it for free. And I'll just tell them, hey, use that money and donate it, you know, to the orphanage or uh, go ahead and just, yeah, give it, yeah, you know, give it to someone and then just buy supplies to people or whatever. So I, I try to get involved in that way. Um, I, I still have a long ways to go, you know, like I, I, I do want to do this at a bigger scale in the future, not just in Nepal, but just, you know, like even Canada and, and even help out like a huge focus for me right now is will also be just helping out. You know, there's so many Nepalese, young Nepalese people coming and just helping them out and, you know, showing them the way. And uh, I've already kind of been in connection with some of them. And it, it's it's awesome just seeing their excitement and just seeing, you know, like them, 
them feel like a little hopeful that wow, like this is possible. Like you know, it's not just oh, the, like the international students struggle. <laughs> you know, they like they can actually do business stuff as well. Uh, okay, so uh, now there is a question from audience. So uh, can you do SWOT analysis of hospitality industry? Um, the thing is, right, I am in the marketing industry. Uh -huh. I am not like. I, I know uh, a little bit about the hospitality industry. Again, like I said, I am the person, I'm the ideas person. The mm -hmm. operations is my parents. If mm -hmm. I try to give you advice on hospitality industry, I would be lying to you because I'll be telling you something I don't know much about. So I don't know enough about the hospitality industry or have taken my time to study, get experience and get data to give you the right conclusions. Because if I'm saying anything about it right now, I would be talking out of, you know what I'm saying? I'll be just repeating things that, even I don't know if I'm sure. Anything marketing, emails, e-commerce related, I can actually talk about, but hospitality industry, not so much. That's fine. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so moving towards uh, the youth, the newcomers here, the students. So what advice would you like to give them to get involved in businesses or to try something new out of their comfort zone? Focus on skills. Focus on learning and just developing skills. Because even the example I gave you of the first person that paid me $2,000 to write emails, you know, they say luck is when opportunity meets preparation, right? So if you are learning, if you are gaining your skills, you are prepared. And one day when an opportunity goes by, you realize, oh, I can capitalize on this. So learn and just focus on getting better at a skill. You know what I mean? And there's so many skills that, uh, and, and I would focus on high income skills, right? Like uh, skills that are in demand that have low supply. So, you know, marketing is one of them. Not everyone is an amazing marketer, right? Not everyone is even like now I'm even noticing video editing, right? Good video editing. If you're really good, you know, you will, you will get opportunities and, and that could earn you more than a job, a full-time job. You know, it can be a six figure a year opportunity. So just learn skill, just learn. Like, especially if you're young, learn like this is the time to take risk when you have a family when you have kids and a wife like that you won't be able to take risk and you won't be able to try things then as much as when you are young and you have this freedom and you know try things and fail like i think so many people are scared of failing and that's why they don't grow is because they're always so like scared and in their comfort zone but you know if you want to go to the next level you have to fail right like for me i have to one of the I, it was impossible for me to Talk, speak to a camera or even get on a phone call right but i had to make videos that were bad i had to you know like do things that suck at doing things that i i wanted to do to like get better and eventually you know getting better is what just helped me you know succeed with this even even when we face that in our daily life when we listen to our recorded voice like we feel awkward like i cannot mm -hmm. do Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So uh, looking ahead, so what are your future goals, aspirations for the future, both personally and professionally? Um, you know, for me, I I look at everything I'm doing right now as the vehicle towards the bigger things I will do when I'm older. And I've always said I think the biggest things and the biggest impacts I will make will be back back home in Nepal, right? Like right now, I'm just, I'm just very grateful that I was able to come to Canada at a young age, learn learn about how things work, you know, be, be in a position where I've, you know, um, I've, I've been able to provide for myself and my family. And, and right now, all the, everything that I'm doing with my Airbnb, my businesses, all these are just going to help me, you know, again, skills, right. Help me learn and help me get better at doing things. So in the future, when I want to, when I go back to Nepal and, you know, want to do something, let's say I'll main, my main focus would be like, you know, like an education industry or something that I, I can go and just, I am skilled and I'm ready to do so, right? So my future goals has a lot to do and business wise. I, I do see myself um, and I don't know when, you know, I'm, I'm 23 only. <laughs> so I have a lot of time to go, but maybe in my thirties and my forties, I definitely see myself just, you know, going to Nepal and seeing, okay, like, you know, with the knowledge and the capital that we have from, you know, Canada, US, all of it, like, how can we go back to Nepal and make a change? Like that's a huge focus for me outside of that personally, um, you know, just get it becoming a better person every day, a better son, a better leader, a better boss, a better friend, you know, a better brother. Um, and just, yeah, just, you know, um, I still want to travel the world, <laughs> uh, explore different areas and just, you know, continue what I'm doing and just, you know, let, just 
let life do its thing, just uncertain, but uh, yeah, these exciting times. Okay, so ending up with your passion for travel. So can you uh, share where, which places you have visited and how life feels like when you travel and explore? And so that's another part of the life that you are going, seeing new things, learning new things. Mm -hmm. uh, traveling. So right when I started making my first you know, money online with my email business, it was enough where I could travel. So I, I exercised that, right? So I would first start off by going to US a lot, right? So I would go to New York and then I started, I went to California. Then I was blessed enough to uh, have an opportunity to visit Tokyo, right? So I've, I've been to, I think I've been to, yeah, I've been to Japan. I've been to, I, I go to South, I just, this year, I went to South Africa, Dubai. I went um, on Wednesday, I'm going to Miami. I came back from Miami two months ago from Colorado a month. So I travel all around. Um, a lot in the U.S. I've been in. I've not really been to Europe that much. I've been to Africa like so much now, <laughs> like South Africa specifically. But um, you know, not much of Europe in different parts. But why I like to travel is that it exposes me to things that you can't learn from books and re like you know, listening to someone, right? So, um, or even like when you go to back to Nepal, you know, like I feel like the the feelings I get, I can't explain to people, right? Like. When I, when I see certain things, like I get so much gratitude. I'm like, wow, like, you know, I, I complain about the smallest things sometimes, like, you know, and, but when people are, like, you know, living life like this. So it gives me new perspectives that you just can't gain from reading a book, you know, uh, or even you realize that, oh, my God, there's different ways to live life. There's different ways of doing things. And every time I travel, I, I elevate as a person because, you know, it's, 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 this is how I look at it. A lot of people have a view of the world, right? How they think the world is, but they have never left their hometown. So they're just telling you what they think and what they've heard. But if you actually go and experience, now you can, whatever you're saying is your truth. It's actually true because you lived it. It's not because, you know, someone that's never left Canada can't just start talking about Dubai if they've never been to Dubai or South Africa, if they've never been to South Africa, right? So. Also, just like that, just getting these experiences where I can go ahead and just be like, yeah, this is how, you know, like this is a gaining perspectives that is just more real to me. So uh, that the questions are uh, all. Uh, and so one last question. So have you ever thought of moving back to Nepal? Um, Not permanently, but for uh, I think as I'm growing older, I, I want to make it a habit to go back to Nepal often. Um, actually next month I'm going to India and, you know, while I'm there, I'm going to just make a quick trip to Nepal just because, you know, like to see family, but just always stay in touch with, you know, like my motherland where I was born, where, where I'm from, you know, and e even though I left Nepal so young, so there's so much about Nepal I've yet to explore, yet to learn about, yet to do. So I, I love going back home. I, it makes me, it makes me feel very like, you know, fulfilled and whole and, and I will always continue to go back to Nepal. Moving there uh, permanently, I don't, I don't know, but I do see myself, you know, going, going ever so often. Especially once I start doing business there, I know for a fact it will be a consistent thing. Uh, so true. We feel connected where we belong, right? So, mm -hmm. so the questions are all. So um, thank you. And lastly, we'd like to thank all of our viewers joining us live thank from TaiwanCover.com for your continuous love and support. Uh, this is Sanchita signing off. We will join you next Sunday, 10 a.m. with another inspiring guest. So thank you so much. Thank you, Barikjit. Thank you.